Hey everybody, welcome to Planes Over It. Uh, we are going to continue with our A320 series and I think uh, today's video is going to be the, one of the most awaited videos we are doing on electrical today. The disclaimer remains same, do not use any of this information that you are learning in practical application anywhere. Alright, so let's begin electrical uh, system of the Airbus A320 aircraft. So these are the following components of the system. Two engine driven generators, APU generator, external power or the ground power and uh, emergency generator, static inverter transformer rectifier batteries circuit breakers ac bus dc bus essential bus etc so we're going to talk about all of these now one by one before that we actually will have a look at the circuit diagram of the electrical system itself so this is the diagram and uh, here we have generator 1 generator 2 these are the engine generators apu generator external power the ground power is here AC bus 1, AC bus 2 is here, then you have TR1 transformer rectifiers 1 and 2. This is an optional one here, entertainment if the aircraft has an entertainment system, in the, it's IFE, in-flight entertainment. Then you have uh, AC essential shed, AC essential bus, DC essential bus, DC bus 1, DC bus 2, DC bad bus, and you have battery 1 and 2. Now, uh, the important question on this is, uh, why, why do we have an AC and a DC bus? So, uh, before actually I go go forward, I will just quickly tell you that AC is uh, alternating current and it is alternates like a sinusoidal waveform and DC is something that is straight. Alright, so this is AC and DC. You can actually go on studying more about it. But what happens is in the aircraft, there are uh, some components that run on DC and some components that run on AC. So that's why the aircraft needs both and the generators give you AC but you need DC so you convert it so my uh, suggestion would be if you are able to have a have, have an idea of this uh, circuit diagram then you your whole electrical system is sorted for a good good amount of time all right so this is the emergency generator here all right let's begin with the you know uh, understanding each component engine driven generator so it is driven through the integrated uh, drive by each engine so if the engine is rotating there's an integrated drive and it is connected and the generator rotates and it, then it supplies 90 kilo volt amperes of three phase 115 to 100 volts 400 hertz of power so uh, kilowatt ampere is a unit of apparent power and 400 hertz is the frequency and this is the voltage and three phase of course so that is the role of engine driven generator it the, both Engines have engine driven generator located underneath the engine. Alright, so APU. Now, APU is auxiliary power unit. Actually, it's a separate uh, video that I'm going to make on APU. But APU also has a generator itself and it's driven by the APU. Supplies the same as the engine driven generator and can replace either or both engines at a time, at any time. Alright, so in case engine uh, fails, the APU can take over. External power, ground power connected near the nose wheel is an external power basically when you're parked near the bay or you know near uh, where you have ground power connection that's where external power is. Emergency generator. Okay, so the blue hydraulic circuit drives an emergency generator that automatically supplies emergency AC power to the aircraft electrical system if all main generators fail. All main generators include your engine driven generator 2, APU generator 1. So if all of this fails then your blue hydraulic circuit will run an emergency generator and it will supply some emergency AC to run the important components. Now this generator supplies 5 kV ampere of 3 phase 115 and 200 volts of 400 hertz power. Alright, so it supplies a little less than what, quite less actually, 90 here and it's 5 here. Alright, so static inverter. So static inverter is the one that transforms DC power from battery 1 into 1 kV ampere of single phase 115 volt 400 hertz of AC power. So static inverter, if you go back here, this is the one that is here static inverter. So in case of you know any failures or something, it will actually, batteries hold DC power, alright. So batteries, it will convert from batteries that is giving DC power, it inverted back into AC power for components that require AC. Uh, current okay transformer rectifier two main transformer rectifiers tr1 and tr2 supply the aircraft's electrical system with up to 200 amps of dc current now how do you remember this now you know i just got an easy way if you would like to know suppose this is the one ac and this is the one that's dc so transformer rectifier is the one actually that rectifies now this is going wavy right so it rectifies 
and makes it straight. So it converts AC to DC. That's how you remember tra transformer rectifier. Static inverter is the opposite of transformer rectifier. Okay, uh, you can just uh, go have a look here. TR1. So AC is being converted into DC. So transformer rectifier. Batteries is as all of you know, it's just normal batteries that are there. Two main batteries, each with normal capacity of 23 amp hour, are permanently connected to the two hot buses. Each battery has, has an associated battery charge limiter called BCL. The BCL monitors battery charging and controls its back battery contractor. If, contactor. if in case you know your charge is going down, it'll connect it and it'll charge it from the bus. All of that sort. In case of emergency, to start an APU, the battery is generally used. Now, bus bar. Like, no, not many of us know what exactly a bus is. We just know it's some sort of, uh, you know, electrical component. But actually, it's a metallic strip or bar, and it is used to carry substantial amount of current over a relatively short distance because they have greater surface area when compared to a wire. You know, if you have a wire. The same amount, if you take into a bus bar, it'll have a greater surface. So that reduces losses due to coroner discharge. Okay, coroner discharge is something that we really uh, wouldn't uh, be interested to know in, in this course. So that's about bus bar. So all the bus bars are some metallic strip or bar kind of a component. Circuit breaker, it's one of the most important components of the electrical uh, uh, system. So it has uh, it is basically a fuse in, in common terms. So there are two types of CBs. And they are monitored and non-monitored. Monitored ones are green. So what happens is if, if the CB pops out and if it stays like that for a minute, then a warning is shown on the ECAM. So, you know, majorly primary uh, uh, components of the aircraft will be monitored. Non-monitored are the ones that are not really important. Suppose your uh, in-flight entertainment has been tripped. So that information is not really important to be shown on the ECAM. So that is in non-monitored. Now, interesting points are the wingtip brake CB have red caps on them to prevent them from being reset in air. So you can actually come down and do the reset. You you cannot reset in the air. So it has a cap. So it's a generally commonly asked question, which kind of CBs have uh, red caps on them. Another important, uh, very, very important uh, point of the electrical system is what are the priorities? So the engine generators, both the engine generators have priority over external power and then external power has priority above APU. So any any uh, you know uh, decision that has to be done will happen in this order first will come the engine generator then external power and then the apu all right now let's talk about the configurations i will also explain the failures i know this video will become a little long but uh, if you patiently here you will get through all of it so as i said uh, the diagram is very important to know then you can just talk through any any diagram for any configuration so in flight normally this is the configuration each and uh, both the generators are running okay and uh, each generator is supplying to the respective buses ac1 ac2 is supplied as you can see the arrow mark here ac bus 1 supplies ac essential bus here on the right then tr1 supplies to dc1 and it supplies to dc bat and dc essential tr2 supplies to the dc bus 2 so it's important to know that the left hand side is uh, it has uh, you know heavyweight kind of stuff it's supplying a lot of to ac essential dc bat and dc essential as well so this is the normal in flight configuration on ground what happens so if your generators are off so that is i mean is your uh, engines are off and you have external power then as you can see your external power is supplying both the circuits okay ac1 and ac2 here if one engine is on and apu is running so apu supplies one side so as you can see suppose this engine is running apu is supplying to this side It'll be obviously the opposite if you, if this engine is running and this engine is not running, AP will supply that side. Okay. And if both engines are off, no external, but AP is running, so APU will supply both the sides. So this is these are the three normal ground configurations that are possible. Okay. Now let's talk about some failures here. So what happens if your one engine is failed? Basically, one engine is failed means your engine generator is also gone. So what happens is immediately it is replaced by APU if APU is running or other generator. So the priority is given to the other generator first. All right. So that's why it's connected here. If you remember the priority list, it is the generator, the external power, which is not possible in the air, of course, and your APU at the last. So if it is automatically replaced by the other generator primarily and to shed the load on the generator too, we will switch on the APU and use the APU. 
okay and in such cases automatically your galley and you know all that are uh, all those equipments that are not really required for safe performance of the flight is all automatically shed failure of ac bus 1 uh, ac bus 1 is here towards your left so ac bus 2 supplies the ac essential and the essential tr and dc essential and dc2 supplies the dc bat and the dc1 so this connection is cut off so what generator 2 does is it supplies the whole network then through the dc2 dc bat and dc1 as well okay now what happens if your one transformer rectifier any any one of the transformer rectifier has failed the other transformer rectifier automatically replaces that and the essential tr also comes into action so suppose tr1 has failed here generator 1 cannot go further to dc1 so it supplies ac essential and essential tr kicks in it supplies to dc essential earlier it was it was through tr1 dc1 that dc essential was being supplied now essential tr has come into picture and it is supplying and this side remains the same generator 2 supplying ac2 tr2 dc2 and then dc bat via and that's why dc1 is also supplied since this link has been broken next let's next let's talk about dual tr failure both trs have failed so basically there's no dc connection at all all right so both dc buses are lost along with the dc bat bus itself and uh, then what happens is dc essential bus is supplied by the essential tr via the gen 1 now this is a cl uh, classical case because uh, you don't have any dc power so dc essential dc these this both terms ac essential and dc essential means they are connected to essential components that run on respective dc and ac currents so you know the aircraft will be supplied with the essential components that run on dc via the dc essential bus all right and dc1 and dc2 are completely lost because the, both the trs have failed what will happen if everything is failed like you know the generator is gone apu is gone both both the generators are gone apu is gone anyway there is no ground power on in the air so this what happens is rat ram air turbine extends automatically it powers the blue hydraulics which run the emergency generator as i told you in the definition what happens in an emergency generator now emergency generator runs and it gives its supply it supplies to the essential tr which and also supplies to ac essential because generator is giving direct ac now tr will do ac to dc and supply to dc essential so this will again help you run important components like you know your primary instruments are there any all that all that will be run from dc essential and ac essential so this is a very uh, you know situation that you really wouldn't want to be so anyway uh, i think uh, we are done with the video and i hope you have understood all the failures you can just go rewind back and have a look again make notes the most important thing in the electrical system is if you know the diagram you can solve anything all right thanks for watching guys subscribe to the youtube channel and like the facebook page for regular updates give the video a thumbs up if you like the video do not forget to share it too comment below if you have any doubts i will surely get back i'm available on whatsapp email facebook youtube and cheers and happy landings guys have a great day bye bye take care